Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can dockerize an existing Node.js application and ultimately leverage the benefits of Docker. As always, the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website and I'll leave a link to this in the description below. So within this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how you can create a Docker image that will dynamically pick up changes to a Node.js application and automatically recompile these changes and rerun our application without us having to rebuild and rerun our Docker image. So why are we doing this? Well, Docker offers a number of massive advantages and it can drastically reduce the friction of deploying your application to multiple platforms with minimal fuss. New developers can easily pull down Dockerized applications and run them with just a couple simple commands on their local machine without having to configure things like environment variables and setting the correct version of the underlying runtimes. Application developers can explicitly state within the Docker file everything that application needs in order to run. So let's jump into our text editor of choice. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. First thing we're going to want to do is to create a new file called app.js. Now within this app.js, we're going to specify a really simple Node.js Express.js REST API. So const express equals require express, like so. Next, we're going to want to set up our application. So const app equals express. And finally, we're going to want to define the root API endpoint, which will simply return a hello world whenever we hit that endpoint. So res.send hello world. Nice and simple. And in order to start our server, we're going to want to do app.listen specifying port 3000. And then within the body of this, we want to do console.log my REST API running on port 3000. And that's all there is to it. Now, in order for us to initialize our project, we're going to want to do npm init within the root directory. We're then going to want to step through all of the questions that it prompts us with and give it a name like REST API Docker. We'll stay with version 1.0. We'll leave the description blank. The entry point will be app.js. We're not going to have a test command for now. And step through these. And finally, we'll say yes, this is OK. This will create the package.json. And we can now install the express.js library by doing npm save express. And you'll see this adds the express to our dependencies list like so. Now, in order to get this running, we're going to have to add a start command to our scripts section. So within here, we're going to say start and we want to do node app.js like so. Within our console, we'll then want to test this works by calling npm run start. And you can see our REST API is now successfully listening on localhost port 3000. And if we hit this in the browser, you'll see success. Hello world is returned within the response body. So now that we've got our very simple Node.js Express REST API, how do we go about dockerizing this? Well, the first step we'll need to take is to add a new Docker file, like so, to the root of our application's directory. Within this, we're going to want to specify the base image that we wish to base our Docker image from. So in this example, I'm going to use the node image and I'm going to use the 9-slim tag. Next, I'm going to specify the work dir, which will essentially dictate exactly where all of our application's code will go and any subsequent commands we run within our Docker file will run within this directory. Next, we want to copy our package.json into our app directory that we've just created. Then once we've got this package.json, we want to run the npm install command. Now, the reason I'm not copying all of my application's uh, source files into the application directory right now is so that we can cache these steps. 
So Docker is quite intelligent in the way that it handles the building of our images. Now, if we do it like this, we can then cache these steps so that every time we make a change and rebuild our application and our Docker file, we don't have to run through these steps again. Now that we've got our applications dependencies all installed, we then need to copy over our application's source files to the app directory. And finally, to kick off our application, we want to call npm and start. Perfect. And we've got a slight typo here, so just delete these periods. And then we want to build our Docker container, our Docker image. So Docker build, we use the dash T flag to specify the name of our Docker image and we'll call it node Docker tutorial. And we'll specify the path of our Docker file, which is just in the same directory. This will then go away and run through a series of steps that we've defined up here. And it will build our complete Docker image. Now from this Docker image, we can then start to spin up containers. And the way we do that is by calling docker run dash it to give it an interactive terminal. And then we want to specify the port that it runs on. So whilst our application might be running on port 3000, this will be port 3000 within our Docker container. So we need to map that to a free port on our local machine. So one of the free ports on my machine is port 9000. We map this to the internal port of 3000, and then we specify the Docker image we wish to, wish to run. So node Docker tutorial, like so. And as you can see, our Docker container successfully started running on localhost port 9000, but mapped to the internal container port of 3000. So if we go away into our browser and we hit 3000, we should see that we're unable to connect. But if we change this to 9000, which is the port we've mapped it to, we should be seeing our Hello World application. Perfect. Now, if we wanted to run this Docker container in the background, we could come out of here by control Cing, and we could do docker run minus D to run it in detached mode. And we could again specify the port 9000 to 3000 mapping, specifying our Docker image, and then pressing enter. This will go away and it will start up the container in the background. Now, if we want to see the list of running containers, we type the docker ps command. And as you can see, we've got our node docker tutorial image running. It was created four seconds ago and it's been up for nine seconds. And again, we can see things like the port mapping that we specified. So we've been able to successfully dockerize this Node.js application. However, if we wanted to make changes to our source code, then we would have to shut down our running container and then rebuild the image and then subsequently start up that image again. So let's look at how we can optimize this process by using things like Nodemon and how we can use things like the volume flags. So let's first see how we can automatically pick up changes and rerun those changes. Now to do this, we're gonna be using Nodemon. Now, if you come into your package.json and change your start command to nodemon app.js and then try to run npm run start within your console, you should see the nodemon process kicks off and then starts watching any of our files for any changes. So if I come in here and make a simple change, so hello YouTube, save that, it will see these changes and then kick off our server once again. And if you come into our browser, have a look at port 3000 because we're running this locally, you'll see that hello YouTube has now been returned. So whilst this nodemon change might work locally, it won't yet work within our Docker container. Now the first thing we need to do to fix that is to do npm install minus save nodemon. This will explicitly add this to the list of dependencies within our package.json so that our Docker container on build will then have access to that node module. Once we've verified that Nodemon is explicitly defined within our dependencies list, we can then rebuild our Docker image. So docker build minus t node docker tutorial. And again, specify the path. Run that. And you should see that because the underlying package.json has changed, it will then start to redo this particular task.
Okay, now that's done, our Docker image should now have node mon within it. So let's go ahead and try and run this Docker image alongside our existing Docker image that we created not long ago. So Docker run. We're going to want to do this in interactive mode just so we can see the changes getting picked up. We're going to want to specify the port and we've already allocated the previous container to 9000. So let's change this to 9001 mapping to 3000. And we're then going to specify the volume flag. And we'll need to do dollar sign print working directory and slash app like so. Finally, node docker tutorial, specifying our image name and press enter. This should go away. Mount this volume to our container so that it picks up any changes. And if we come in here, we can validate this by changing this back to hello Elliot, like so. And as you can see, our docker container picks up these changes. And if we then navigate to localhost 9001, you'll see hello Elliot getting returned. Now just to validate, let's go back to localhost 9000 and you'll see our unchanged Docker container from our previous section of this tutorial. And that's still returning hello world. So we now have two distinct versions of our application running within two separate Docker containers on the same machine. Excellent. So in this tutorial, We've learned how to implement a Docker container that perfectly wraps around our Node.js application. This Docker container is now deployable anywhere that can run Docker, which is a massive advantage. No more worrying about the fact that it works on my machine. So that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more programming based content. Cheers.